Melbourne's Yarra River is normally a pretty sedate and quiet place. Most of its route goes through parks and bushland, and it's a highly appreciated gem for Melburnians and visitors alike. But, like most rivers, it floods. As European settlement rapidly expanded in the early 20th century, the impacts of major floods also increased. This resulted in flood mitigation schemes, like dams and river diversions, in an attempt to make the floods less frequent and severe. This has succeeded in shielding Melbourne from most flooding, and today we city dwellers see very little of what used to be. One of the biggest and most damaging floods in Melbourne's history occurred in 1934, and this is what we will be talking about in today's video. This is the story of Victoria's Great Flood of 1934. On Thursday the 29th of November 1934, a massive storm engulfed most of Victoria. Strong winds of up to 110 km per hour lashed the CBD, and heavy downpours continued for days on end. By the time the storm was over on Saturday just 48 hours later, more than 140 mm of rain had fallen in metropolitan Melbourne. Country areas were also severely affected, with over 350 mm recorded in Gippsland. This downpour, combined with the strong winds, caused severe damage across every single suburb of Melbourne. Locals reported that the Yarra River became a massive lake stretching from Warrandyte down to South Yarra. Other rivers across the state also flooded and inundated towns, farms and forests. In Kuwirup, the water was reported to be more than two metres deep in the town centre. One of the reasons why the floodwaters were so high was there had been heavy rain in Melbourne and Victoria earlier in November and late October, just a few weeks earlier. As a result, the land was already saturated. A total of 36 people died during the storm or in the subsequent flooding. 17 of the deaths were on the coastal steamer TSS Caramba, which sank about 10 nautical miles south of Seal Rocks on Phillip Island. 6,000 people were also made homeless, and countless animals and livestock were killed. Almost every facet of life was disrupted, but some of the most significant impacts of the storm were to the city's transport network, most of which effectively ground to a halt. Damage was done to every single bridge across the Yarra River in both Melbourne and country areas, with some suffering more than others. The Wallen Road Bridge in Hawthorne was particularly damaged and nearly collapsed entirely. Hundreds of sandbags were hastily dumped on the riverbanks in an effort to stabilise the area, and it took several years of work and bureaucratic infighting before the bridge was finally repaired and replaced. Many footbridges such as Canes Bridge in Yarrabend Park and Pearson's Bridge at Pound Bend were just destroyed entirely, while others like the Burke Road and Chandler Highway Road bridges emerged relatively unscathed. Many other road bridges just outside Melbourne were washed away or severely damaged, such as in Eltham, Warburton and Whittlesea, costing many tens of thousands of pounds to replace. Other watercourses around Melbourne also caused a lot of disruption. Turak Road and Great Valley Road were closed due to flood damage from Gardiners Creek in Taronga and Glen Iris, and water rushing down the Maribyrnong River, Merry Creek and Mooney Ponds Creek caused severe flooding in neighbouring areas. The wind and rain caused a lot of other issues, such as landslides. Alexandra Avenue near Melbourne High School in South Yarra, for one, was blocked for several days. In Gippsland, the open-cut coal mine at Yalorn was flooded to a depth of a massive 76 metres, and so Melbourne's main electricity supply at the time was briefly threatened. Gas services in some parts of Melbourne were also disrupted. Heidelberg's gas wasn't restored until a full fortnight after the storm. There was even a brief shortage of milk because of the disruption caused to transport routes and farms, particularly from Gippsland, but authorities worked quickly and the crisis was resolved by Tuesday. In response to all of this, state and local governments set to work on rescue and recovery efforts. They also set up refugee centres for the thousands of people made homeless. Flemington, Chelsea, Kuwirup, Richmond, Paran and Abbotsford were the most heavily affected areas and had the largest centres as a result. A massive fundraising effort was also launched through the media. 
Several public funds were set up for donations, but by far the largest was the Lord Mayor's Flooded Distress Relief Fund set up by the City of Melbourne. By the time it was wound up in June 1936, it had raised almost £130,000, paid to 2,728 applicants. As I mentioned in the introduction, the long-term impacts of this flood are still felt by us today. While flood mitigation schemes had been in place before 1934, this event brought more public attention to the issue. For example, more emphasis was placed on building dams, weirs and river diversions in an attempt to make the river so-called more tame. Other measures were also introduced, such as planning regulations to avoid people constructing buildings in flood zones, or constructing them to more flood-resistant standards. This is largely why we now rarely see the extent or impact of floods like this one in Melbourne. Our broader understanding of designing cities around water has also developed a lot. Today, rather than attempting to control or move water as quickly as possible away from built-up areas, modern designs instead look to do other things. For example, slowing down the flow of water by storing it in places like wetlands and water retention basins. This not only reduces the risk of flooding and overloading drainage systems, but also creates parkland and habitat for flora and fauna. While previous and subsequent floods were more extensive or longer lasting, this 1934 flood was particularly destructive because Melbourne had grown so much so quickly. Basically, there were more things in the way of the river to be damaged than before. With our modern technology and better understanding of water today, it's likely that we will continue to see improvements in our management of floods like this one. Thanks for watching this video about the Great Flood of the Yarra River in 1934. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this so you can stay up to date on the latest videos and continue to support this channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.